Did you forget your original plan? Very 29 mar 29, 2019 marks the 50th anniversary of the historic Woodstock Music Festival. While an anniversary festival has unfortunately fallen through, the music lives on in a new movie from Portland, Oregon-based directors. We just heard one of the original songs from the Woodstock or Bus soundtrack, and here with us is the movie's director, Leslie Bloom, and one of the film's stars, Lisa Scavarla. It's very good to see you both. Thank you. You, you. look very different than you do in the movie where you are a, you are a <laughs> mom all the way. I am, yes, I am. All the way through. Um, Leslie, let's talk about the music first. The song that we just heard is one that your friend Michelle wrote. It is, yes. Tell she, us a little bit about the story behind that. Um, well, she actually wrote an album of songs, and I went to visit her about two and a half years ago on New Year's Eve, and uh, I think it was 2017, and I asked her what she did with all this, this album that she had written. I think it was like early 80s, actually. And um, she said, well, let's see, I put the, the cassettes in the microwave and make Frisbees out of them. <laughs> and I'm like, what, are you kidding me? Because I loved the album. I had one in my car, and I listened to it all the time. And I said, well, let's wrap a movie around it. And she's like, That's awesome. a real movie? And I said, well, yeah, movie. let's make yeah. a movie. And, an absolutely and, you know, real movie. And so it took me about a month to figure it out. By the way, Woodstock is still happening. It's the, there's two of them. And the one at the original site is happening, and that's where we're we're going to be um, okay. showing the film. Fingers and, crossed that everything oh, stays. Oh, that one yes. stays. No, that one's it's yeah. tight and it's ready to okay, go. Okay, good. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Um, so there's also music from other bands from the Northwest, correct? There is. Uh huh. We have, um, I think, uh, five or six. We have a song from the Reverberations. We have a song from the Cool Whips, and we have a song from the uh, John Bunzo Band, Lisa Mann, and Bree. Uh, Bree Gregg sang the opening opera. Which is ah, really, really yes. good. Lisa, tell us a little bit about your character and the story in general. Um, I'm Sophia uh, Fontana, and I am a uh, opera singer. So it was very interesting when the film opened. It's like I'm singing opera, and it was the first time I've ever had like a camera in, in my mouth. mouth. <laughs> So that was very, very unique. Um, but yeah, she's she's very successful, and you know, with her daughter, she's not you know always encouraging, but she wants the best for her. But what I like about this film, there's two strong leads. I play um, the lead's mother with uh, Meg DeLacy, mm -hmm. and they're just very strong women characters, and they're backed by very strong character women. And just like throughout the whole entire film, I love it that all the women characters are very strong. The girls have a dream. Tell yes. me a bit about that. Yes, um, they want to become professional singers and they want to go to Woodstock. So they, they take these adventures and um, I, I love the film because it's a timepiece. It takes obviously in the 60s and the music is fantastic and it's a coming of age film where the girls you know they they go on this adventure they meet people they you know have disappointments and accountability and uh, conflict but they they learn who they are through going through this right. process. And your character is not convinced the girls are really good enough to do what they're dreaming of and so right. they have to wrestle with that as well. Well I'm the, I'm the reality check. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and 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 you know you don't have to be a, a, a perfect mom. You can just you're, to be a good mom. You know, so even though I'm not the most encouraging, I'm just I'm there for her <laughs> to be, you know, the best she can and with re if reality. If possible, yes. Um, and so you guys have worked together before, if I understand this correctly. What did you do? We actually met like literally almost like three decades ago yeah, on Northern, Northern Exposure. Exposure. No way. <laughs> yes, we wow. both worked on, on that. And then in addition, I mean, we I got this role through a mutual friend who said, oh, you, you sing, right? And I said, yeah. And she goes, well, there's this woman. She She's looking for, a, you know, a singer, and, and I think you would be a perfect fit. You should, you know, at least audition for it. So I auditioned, and I sang, and sang the Ave Maria, and, and it was wonderful hearing from her. Then we connected. We know each other. <laughs> Did you remember? I knew. Well, we were friends on Facebook, and I knew that I had met her before. She was. She was. You were only on Northern Exposure for a short well, period I was on of for time for the third season. Yeah, yeah and third so, season. but it did come back to me. Yeah, that we that we had worked together after that was happening. Yeah. yeah. Is this your first feature? 
Uh, it's my first narrative feature. First narrative feature. Right. So what was that like making that jump into another kind of it, You know, it, it, was, it was like uh, meant to be. It was the next step. Because I had been um, on uh, narrative films and television series for 30 years. I'm a member of the Directors Guild of America. And um, I've been in that for over 30 years. And so everything I've done has been a very sort of high quality, um, high production value kinds of uh, films and I've learned from some of the best directors in the business. So uh, for me it was really hard when feature films would come to town and they'd want me to take two steps back to work on a feature. So I just thought, you know, now, now's, the time. now's the time. Now's the time, yeah. And so yeah, it, it was time to make my own movie, yeah. Let's take a look at a clip. Oh boy. You turn 18, you can run away with your guitar. Look at your dad. He's been at the same club with Don Ho for years. Okay, Dad loves making music, and so do I. And I love composing and singing. I don't want to do anything else. Do you know how hard it is to become a professional in the music world? You know that's a horrible lifestyle. All of those musicians are on drugs, driving around from town to town, playing bars, drinking. And to be quite honest, you just don't have it. A great hobby, though. A hobby? No. I want people to hear my music, to, to find meaning in what I'm saying. I, I know it's tough, but Mare is really talented. She could be the next Joni Mitchell or Judy Collins. It's why God put me on this earth. It's what I'm meant to do. You better get used to it. Maybe throw in a little side of support. There we go. Shaq, now. <laughs> <laughs> and then off they go. But we were talking about before we came on the air, the comparison between this era and the era we're living in now in terms of tumultuous times, kids figuring out who they are, dreaming their own dreams. Um, yeah. Tell me a bit about how that hits home for you. Well, when, when I was writing the film, I knew I wanted to tie in some of the 60s events. And then as I started thinking about it more and more, that the whole Vietnam War thing was the thing that affected me most. I was probably about 13, and my um, boyfriend at, at 13, his brother died in Vietnam, much the same as one of the characters in the film. Um, but uh, so that affected me big time. And we used to we used to go down to the moratoriums and walk and you know, march through the streets, and we go to Portland State when they had you know the National Guard out and. And it just, it feels so much like the black veil that's hanging over us now in this country. It's a very, very similar feeling of, of you know, no hope, I think, or, or loss of hope. Just really high stress and high stakes for yeah. the things that are going on. And yet you look at that through this very personal story, which I think allows us in. What is next for both of you? Um, well, I have another feature film coming out next month. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I know, when it comes back. <laughs> Um, I also run and operate Playhouse Northwest Acting School, and I'm teaching Meisner classes here in Seattle in October. That's awesome. As well as in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, so we expanded. Great. And then um, just recently, um, I had uh, the honor to produce and direct a music video that dealt with mental health. So, wow. Sounds yeah. very important. Yeah. I hope you'll let us know where the link is to that and we'll put it on we'll the web do. today so people can see it. And what's next for you? Well, we're in pre production for a movie called Rainbow Cowboy. And uh, I that figure, sounds fun already. <laughs> what is that? I know, right? And I, think, and I figure, you know, every yeah. film that's ever been something cowboy is always done really that well. That is true. Rhinestone cowboy, drugstore cowboy, yeah, exactly. midnight cowboy. Exactly. exactly. So right. you know, in this, in again, in this era, era of uh, you know the diversity issues, I thought I'd put this one out there, and it's definitely an alt right against the alt left, and there will be a showdown. Wow. <laughs> Wow. All but, right. As long as they're cowboys, I'm yeah, in. Thank you so much. Cowboys. Thank but you so much. We do want to mention yeah. that the film is playing at the Varsity Theater. Yes, that's what yep. I'm saying. 1230. This, this Sunday. Sunday at the Varsity Theater. Yeah, and you have okay. to go to Eventbrite to purchase a ticket for Very that. Very good. It's We're going to put... fund our uh, trip to Woodstock. In our, Great. Yeah. We'll put all that on the web. Great. And in Thank addition you. to that, Woodstock or Bus will be available on digital streaming platforms on mm -hmm. August 13th, which is right around the corner.